Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you to my subscribers and welcome to the newcomers. I hope you like what you see and if so, please do subscribe, be part of this journey. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell notification for new uploads. Make your comments, uh, your opinions, what do you think about these projects and if you have created already some, let me know which one and how did it go. Um, I thank you so much to er everybody that has been commenting on the groups and been following me from the start. Thank you so much for your support. I am very, very, very grateful. We are going to create um, a table runner with grapes, as you can see. I do have the tutorial out on the grapes, which I will link it below once I am done with the upload of this tutorial. Um, I'm going to apply uh, these grapes on, on there on the pattern for the table runner, which I'm still working on them. And you can see this one is almost there, but I'm still going to put either uh, dark green um, branches coming through or will be with a multicolored brown. But I will see as I'm going along. So I thank you so much, everybody, uh, for being part of this journey with me. I've alternated colors, so I will be using different colors on the pattern for the grapes. Because, as you know, we have red grapes, we have blue grapes, we have white grapes, green grapes, you name it. So that's why I'm alternating colors in between the grapes, because I would like to incorporate all of these colors in. So I hope you're going to create this with me. And we're going to get started. And thank you so much, every everybody, again. Please feel free to ask any questions if you're stuck somewhere with any pattern of mine on the tutorials. Uh, bear with me. I'm still new with codes. I'm still learning the crochet codes. So um, thank you so much for your patience on that. And I also suggest that you look at the video up ahead before you create anything just to see if there's any changes or any mistakes. It can happen as a human being. I might change my mind on some things or I could have made a mistake and went back and readjusted it. Um, sometimes I only catch myself up ahead. And in order not to delete the whole uh, recording, then I adjust the air that has been done. So it's always best to look at the video up ahead. Another thing I wanted to mention, sometimes I'm out of my uh, head into my bubble creating these things, talking, yapping away, and forget that I'm recording, uh, so concentrate on, on creating the stitch. Um, it, I, it, it, you know, it can happen that I'm a little bit too fast. Uh, it's just a bad habit of mine. If you find them too fast for you and I totally forget I'm on the recording, it, it does happen. Please, up top on the right side, there's three little dots. You click on there, go into settings, and slow down the video to the uh, to the uh, uh, slowest uh, that you would like to see um, the video go through. Okay, so it's very simple, um, much simpler for you to slow down the video than for me to remember to slow down on my stitch. So I thank you so much for your patience on that too. And we're going to get started. These are 100% um, cut and thread, multicolored ones. As you can see, I have several different multicolored uh, threads. Uh, size 4. Now, my size 4 is the same thickness as Aunt Lydia size 3, which this is a, a medium, uh, medium big uh, patterns when you're creating them, of course. Because, you know, the thicker you go on the thread, the uh, thicker, the bigger the pattern. So, Aunt Lydia is the same size for number three. Aunt Lydia is the same size as number four for me here in Europe. If you want your pattern smaller um, for like a four seat or, or any other uh, little table or counter or whatever, and you don't want it too thick, you want smaller pieces, go with number 10 and Lydia, 100% cotton, you will get that at Walmart, or you can buy it online, I believe. I've always bought it on Walmart when I did live in Canada, and worked a lot with those uh, two numbers, number 10 and number 3. That's why I speak of it. These are Portuguese uh, threads, 
and like I said, 100% cotton. Needle number three. If your stitch is too tight, go up a notch. If your stitch is too loose, go down a notch on the on the needle. So I use number three, but if your stitch is too loose, go to two and a half or even two. Um, if it's too tight, then you can go to uh, three and a half. Uh, mine is very tight, so I use a three. I love working with this three, even though it's all beat up so much anyway. And it's very hard to find this type here in the island. So I've I've done everything to this poor needle. Um, as you can see, it's it's eaten a lot of this uh, rubber uh, stuff out. So because I work with nails, imagine I put acrylic um, gel for the nails. I put acrylic gel on here so you can stop. Uh, wasting the rest of my rubber poor thing it's all wasted but I love this needle it's very hard to find it so uh, we're going to get started and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy this table runner and this tutorial thank you so much everybody okay everyone so I started with the slip stitch knot and did 68 chain stitch Hopefully I have the right sides because the grapes will take a lot of space on both sides. So 68 chain stitch. We're going to go back one, one, two, three, four. On your fifth space, we're going to do the double crochet. And now we're going to do double crochet for each space until the end okay so continue yours and I'll continue mine and I'll meet you at the end so I finished doing my double crochet and I ended up with 64 double crochet now, it doesn't matter if you have 62 or 60, as long as it's bare, or 66, as long as it's bare. It doesn't change anything on the, on the stitches, okay? So we go up three, because sometimes you can miss, you know, a few um, stitches underneath. So, just going to bring this up a little bit more closer. Not too close, because it fogs out. So this row, uh, there's nothing to it. It's all double crochets over double crochet. So very simple. Now I didn't uh, want it too wide because of the grapes that go on each side. That's going to take already a lot of space. And you can't have it too thin either, or else the grates, when you add them on each side, they're going to be too close together. The leaves, um, with the leaves, I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Sometimes it's better shown. So I'll just back it up. Okay, so back it up still again. So even though it's all backed up, it's not huge enough. So what I mean is when you're putting your leaf on this end, okay, uh, your leaf, your, your grape on this end, we're going to attach it, let's say, onto here. And then we're going to have the other one on this end here so if it's too thin too little the space in the middle on the center well you're gonna have them too close together right we don't want that we wanted to give it a bit of space here of course my table is very small to show you guys here but you know what I'm saying and have it here so you can have enough space on the center to put your decorations and still have the beauty of the grapes going 
going through the pattern. So we're gonna have grapes all the way through, and then at the end, we're gonna have one or two facing this way. And then at this end, the same thing. We're gonna have one or two facing this way. So of course it look, doesn't look normal now because we're still at the beginning process. But it's gonna look gorgeous, of course. And um, so that's what it's going to look like, okay? So we're going to continue on with the double crochet. Just make sure you have even numbers. And I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so this is 63. And then 64, you got to make sure that you get it right in the corner of this so we can have a straight uh, square table runner. And sometimes my stitch is so... Um, so tight, I never learned my lesson. That's how terrible I am. So 64 with that one. Okay, so now we're gonna turn our work around. Get some more lighting over here. One, two, three. We're gonna do groups of four double crochet at the beginning and at the end always throughout the whole pattern until the length desire. So you can go up as you wish and have the length you want for the size of whatever you're putting on top of. One chain separation. We're gonna skip one, two, on the third space. I'm really off camera, I better turn this a bit here because my position is horrible. So one chain separation skip one two on the third space we're going to do a group here of double crochet so we're going to have three double crochet next space double crochet now we're going to do a diagonal double crochet so we skipped two spaces but we're going to come right on the first one beside the double crochet here and we're going to pull our thread from behind. We're going to bring it up front. And we're going to stretch it enough to the length of the row that we are working in. And we're going to do a double crochet here. Again, one chain. This is from this double crochet, so don't get confused on it. One, two, on the third space, again. Double crochet, next space, double crochet, and next space, double crochet. Again, we're going to go inside of the first space we skipped. We're going to grab our thread, and we're going to pull it to the front, and we're going to double crochet it. One chain, skip one, two on the third space, double crochet, next space, double crochet, next space, double crochet. We're going to go into the first space, not the second one there, but the first one here. Grab our thread, pull it. We're going to do that all the way to the end. Getting to the end, we're doing the four double crochets on the other end. So I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we're pretty much reaching the end. I'll just lift a little bit here. And if I count properly, get you closer. Let's see. Um, now, if I count properly, if I'm to skip one, two on the third one, that means I would be missing one, one double crochet. So I'm only going to skip only this time so I can get it straight. I'm going to skip one only, and on the second one, it doesn't make any difference on the pattern. I'm going to do my double crochet 
so I can have the four double crochets on the corner and it's just the perfect amount and you can't see that that it's missing okay so like this it all um, balances out the same way so I'll be having one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so I'll be having eleven of the diagonal what do you call it? Diagonal double crochet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, 11. Doesn't make any difference if there was 11 or 12. It's, you know, I'm going for the length of the pattern and the wideness. So, you know, so we're doing, so this now it's going to be repeatedly until the end, until the desired length, okay? Which I don't know yet uh, how many rows it's going to take. So now we do the four double crochets again. Inside of the space where we have that one chain, we're doing one double crochet. And then overlapping the three double crochets that we did here are actually the four double crochets. And one inside of the space. So we're going to repeatedly do the same thing throughout the whole pattern. One row of this diagonal double crochet and one row of just double crochets. So we have four double crochets here on the groups of the diagonal double crochet. So we're going to do the four double crochets plus one in the middle of the space plus the four at the end at the beginning and four at the end. So you should have the same amount again of the same of the of the double crochets. And like I said, it's repeatedly, so there's no point in me keep recording and taking so much room on the memory of my phone. And you just to the desired length you'd like to have, not necessarily that your desired length will be the same size as mine, or maybe you're going to use the same amount of grapes, which I don't know yet at this point how many grapes I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to at least try to have three or four on each side, so i got to give them enough space to have them um, stick out. Okay, so we're doing it this way. And then the next row will be the diagonal. So if you need to rewind and see it again, then you do that. And again, we're going to proceed on skipping the two. Um, so we're going to do the um, the four, the four double crochet, and then we're going to skip again, one, two, and then we're going to proceed to do the the three double crochet with the diagonal one on each at the end just to make sure that you don't get lost okay you guys so I did my row of the double crochet now one way to know that you're right you're never going to be mistaken you have to have 64 double crochet in order to do the twist double crochet okay so that means what you need to do your four double crochets. You need to do your four double crochets over the double crochets from the previous row, one inside of the space, and then four that's on top of the four that we created with the twist, as you see here. One, two, three, and four. And then one in the space again, then one, two, three, and four. And then on the space again. So you're going to have a total of 64 double crochets in order to have it uh, correct. And then you turn around again. You'd create the, just pull my camera here a bit before I knock it, because I have to have it positioned here for recording. Three, chain, and do your four double crochets these four double crochet groups at the beginning at the end will always stay the same no matter what and then one chain so again 
you would be skipping the um, the true space and you'd come into the third one right so you'd skip one two and you do your three double crochet next space and then you'd come to the first space here and do your twisted double crochet your diagonal okay one chain again and skip one two on the third space again you'd have your three double crochet and then come on the first space again here bring the thread up to the level one chain again one two on the third space so it's going to be repeatedly like this throughout this row also and then the next row is only 64 double crochets per space one per space and then we're going to repeat the pattern so like i said you do to the desired um length you would like i don't know yet how many rows i'm going to do um so you can advance up if you're doing the same size as mine you could do it smaller if you like with less grapes and less uh, length on yours but if you're doing the same size just advance the video up to see up until how many rows i'm going to do mine Okay, so you're going to continue yours. I'm going to continue mine and I'll come back once I am done with the length desired for uh, the grapes because I don't know how many grapes yet I'm going to use. But I'm definitely going to use on here, up top, and on the sides. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end of this so we can close it together and we're going to close the same way also it's going to be two rows of double crochet we started with two rows we're going to close it at two rows okay okay i'm doing the double crochets i want to make sure that you understand what i'm saying we have to do the four because we did three double crochets but we made a side double crochet right we're on the back part now so i've already did one on the space one, two, three, and fourth one, double crochet, and then one in the center. So you're going to have your 64. So again, one, two, three. And four okay so I just want to make sure that you know what I'm doing and you don't like oh my god where am I gonna put the fourth one one more time one in the center one on top of the double crochet, next space double crochet, the third one, and the fourth one, and one in the center again. Okay, this is the back part, so whatever part you turn, you're either going to have it diagonal this way, or you're going to have it this way. Makes it a beautiful pattern. Okay, I'll meet you at the end. Okay, everyone. So I am about to close off on my last um, row. So I finished doing the diagonal uh, stitch. And I did my regular double crochet. So now I'm going to do one more row of double crochet. Exactly like we did here. On the start we started with two we're gonna finish with two now I'm gonna tell you how many rows I have in case you want to make the same 
uh, size. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty-two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. So I'm going to finish it off with 67 rules okay so do your your last rule if you're doing the same size with the grapes on and everything it's about a meter long so all you have to do is just double crochet over double crochet that's it nothing else to it cut your thread and tie in the loose ends, okay? So this is what we're gonna do with that. Now, I wanted to show you. So I had shown you already, I believe, the, these little, uh, what do you call them? Little uh, branches. And I've created the top to be put also on there as the main branch. Okay, so this is very simple also. I've created all of them already. I've left a little bit. I left one behind just to show you. So I'm going to push this over here a bit. So you leave a little bit of string because you want to tie it in the back afterwards to make sure it's secure. So start your slip stitch knot a little bit higher like that. So leave enough string. So, and we are going to grab here between the leaves and go on your second stitch back here, if you can see it, okay? So, right in the middle of the two leaves, like that. And now we're going to do 13 chain stitch you can go as long as you want I'm doing only 13 I don't want it that long I just wanted to give it that little punch on the pattern of the brown coming out branches so counting not you don't count the single the uh, after the single you start counting so one two three four five six mm -hmm. seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen chain stitch now I'm going to go back on the second space and I am going to do single crochet. I'm going to do three on the same space so I can curve a bit. So three single crochet on the second space. And the next space, so I can just give it a bit again of that curve, the next space right next to it, the next loop. I'm going to do two uh, single crochet again. And then the rest of the, the stitches, the chain, I'm doing one per each. So one single crochet on each loop throughout the chain until the beginning. You don't have to do this. It's optional. I just find that it gives it more character to the pattern. It looks more like a grapevine. So... And you go all the way to where you started your single crochet. And then you'd come back in where you started back here on your second stitch from the back. And then single crochet. Now, cut your thread a little bit longer. Slip stitch through it. Turn it to the back. And as you can see, it's it looks quite funny. So you got to come here, grab that uh, string we just cut, and we're going to pull it 
to the back so we can straighten. And the first one here, we're going to pull a little bit more to this side so we can give it a, a nice straight knot so it can balance out the... Okay, so pretty much like that, one on each side. And then just make two, three knots on it and you're okay. Because once you're going to uh, glue and stitch a bit here and there on the pattern, nothing is going to get anywhere. So just give it a couple of knots there and you're secure. What am I knotting the wrong one? Okay. Gee, I thought I knotted the first time right. The second time was I was grabbing the thread from... From the ball of thread that's not good okay so I have like three knots on there already and then you can just cut you don't have to go all the way to the edge because don't forget you're putting this down like this okay and then there it is so you'll be having this on your pattern like that okay and look how pretty that looks of course I still have the green to do on on these ones I'm not done but I wanted to show you okay so I am going to finish up with the last double crochet I'm going to cut my thread and then I'll show you actually I can show you now how I am going to add this on so I have a hot gun I'm still going to tie up my loose ends and I'm going to hot gun it first okay so I'm going to put one in the corner. I'm going to put one on the other corner. It's very hard for you to see. Okay, so I'm going to have two corners like this. And then I'm going to have two um, on the sides. Two or three on the sides. So you can place your grapes as you want, as you like. I might even add, um, add a brown edge here. Either brown or dark green. Just with the... Probably single crochet. I'm not sure yet at this point. I will see. If I, if I don't do the single crochet and I do a different stitch, then I'll record it and, and take it from there. If not, I'm only going to do single crochet all the way around, probably in brown, just to tidy up the whole pattern. So this is pretty much what it's going to look like. Try to... Okay, so I am going to be putting them uh, more or less like that. I know this is very uh, small area, but you will see it at the end once I pretty much have it all in. I have the video, the little video that I will be displaying once I'm done uh, with this on top of the the uh, table so you can see the video and I go slowly through it so you can see very well how I placed it then again you can place your grapes whatever way you'd like so this is just very so I'm going to place one on each corner like I said I was going to do so it's just going to be um, just like that one on each corner like that and then two or three on the sides and then on the other side on the corner will be the same thing done okay so this pretty much tops it for this um i think this is what i'm going to leave at i'm just going to check my my single crochet if i'm happy with it uh, if not then i will record something else on it i'll let you know in a couple of minutes okay so i'm going to try the the single crochet so pretty much went into the corner here and locked in with the slip stitch single and now I'm just trying to hide my thread okay so in the middle here and then on top let's see if it works on top I don't want too much of the white showing here on the edge that's why I'm trying to see if I'm doing on top or just Probably going to be too many stitches. Yeah. We try to work the best way we can. But we're not doing on top of the, the double crochet. We're just going inside of the spaces. 
So very simple, just single crochet all the way through. Just like that. And just close it in with single crochet. I mean, preference of your color. I don't know if you want to use the brown or maybe you could use the dark green also or the light uh, green. It's just to give it a little bit more character to the pattern because of that little um, brown on the branch that we just finished creating it. Okay, so we're going to take it from there. And, uh, and then uh, we're going to hot glue the corners. Okay, so on, on the edge, did all singles. Now we're on the corner here. And I'm going to do um, one chain, come back into the corner, and do two more uh, double crochets. So you're going to have a total of three. Next space, we're going to do, we're on the sides now, okay? We're going to do uh, two per each, two single crochet, I should say, for each. And just put my thread here. Okay, next space, two single, next space, two single. So this is pretty much what it's going to be all the way around. There's nothing to it. The only thing is you get to the corners, you do um, single crochet, one chain, and then two more single crochet. Or you can do two single, one, one chain, and two single. If it gives you a more firm corner, then go ahead. I mean... It's going to be hidden anyway uh, behind my grapes. I don't know if it will be hidden behind yours, but you can do two, one chain, and two single again. I did three. It looks fine to me, but if I if I had found that it was necessary to do four, then I would have. Okay, so continue yours, and then cut your thread and tuck it in. Okay, you guys, so I pretty much finished doing the, the brown. Now, I'm going to place my grapes like this, but of course you can place it whatever way you want it. I have it on the third row, right at the edge on both sides, okay? So I'm going to have only like uh, one, two, three, three grapes out into the pattern, out of the pattern. And these two, I'm trying to see whatever way is best. See, I would... I like it like this, but I think it's it's too out. Like, I like a corner to corner like that, but I think it's too out. So I'm going to place it a little bit more up on the third place about. Like that. And then I'll be fixing my, my little thing here. My little, my little, what do you call it, um, branch. Okay, so if I find that I need to create a few more branches around, then I will. It's up to you. I mean, you can play around with the patterns as you like. So here's my hot gun. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hot gun it. And then afterwards, I'm just going to stitch um, two, let's say two, three stitch here, two, three stitch there, two here and two there. And that's it. And it's not going to move anyway. It's not like you have to stitch the whole thing. You just need to put like an... Four, four little stitch, four corners, and you're good to go. You don't need too much glue either to glue these pieces on. Uh, just enough just to to get it uh, stuck there on the on the pattern. So, and always make sure you have like a piece of paper or something underneath because um, it, the glue the glue can get through and you can damage whatever you have. So I'm going to grab it from here. And place it. So it's not that complicated. And then you just, you know, hot glue it, whatever you think is needed, just to have it in place. So like this one, you're going to go and give it a few uh, stitch. Nothing moves, everything stays in place. 
you know. Good God, I got glue coming out of my ears now. Yeah, won't stick to the powder. It comes through right through the little holes and into my fingers, but that's all good. Because this glue is very easy to come out. So, I'm just going to put a little bit here at the edge. I don't want the edge to be popping up. And I'm also going to put just a little bit there and close up properly. And of course on this side. Like that. A little bit on the edge. Should I let this paper underneath well because it's gonna go right through my towel. And this dries very fast, so you have to be quick with it. Okay, so now we get into our little... I'm just going to place a little bit behind it. And straighten it. And then a little bit more. Not too much, just enough so we can... Stick on there. And give it that, that nice little curve. You don't need to curve too much, just a little bit. Can't see if I'm putting any glue out. It's right on their knee. Not too much, just a little bit. And you put, you know, wherever is needed on the loose ends, just so you stitch it in after. Nothing's going to come out of place, you know. Just like that. Pretty much everything is is glued over here. Okay, so pretty much have this glued in. I think it looks fine like that. Gives it that nice little style. I need my paper here because it's gonna the glue goes right through it. Okay and then we're gonna do this side. So we pretty much do the same thing which I haven't glued this here yet and I will just so you can stay in place. A little bit here, just like that. At least you're sure nothing's going to move anyway, right? And this excess glue you could always pull out. It's easy to, to have it come out.
I believe, you know, uh, for some of you that want to be really secure, if you're not like stitching anything in and you just want to just glue it, Gorilla Glue, apparently, I've never tried it, but I've heard it is the best for these type of things. So you might want to test that out in some type of pattern or so. Let's see. Oh, okay. I was wondering what happened here, but the glue went right through it. Good God. Okay, not bad, but I had ripped it. Okay, so we're going to fix this same way, put on the third place and have it um, so like we did on the other one, we're going to go up to the third place here. Not all the way to the edge. What was I thinking? That wasn't too smart of me, was it? Good God. What was I thinking? Thank God I didn't overput on the edge. But anyway, this, this glue is very easy to come out. So this is just uh, temporary, just to secure everything in place. It's not like permanent glue. But obviously, once you would wash it, it would be coming out, right? But this does help when you want to put things into place. Okay, it's coming along. I just wanted to show you more or less what, oops, all well, that burned. Had a little bit sticking out. It is hot, so you have to be careful with it for sure. Um, so yeah, so I wanted you just to see how I pretty much do mine. As you can see, it comes up very simple out of the napkin. And then you can place yours, you know, the way you'd like it to be. You can have it all around or put all uh, the two sides or of the edges. You can play around with the grapes into the design. That's usually what I do. I play around with it. It's the best way that I like it. That's why I never know at the beginning what I'm going to end up with. I have an image, and then as I go, I keep changing ideas. That's why I always say, look up ahead on the video, because sometimes I change ideas and plans. I have a vision of something, and I and I end up always with something else. So, Okay, so now we're going to glue our middle piece here, just to hide it a little bit like that and I want to turn it a bit so I don't want it just like that I 
Let me figure out this glue comes off easy. And then I would do the same thing on the other end, which there's no point in me recording, so you have an idea. And I will be placing two or three on the sides. Now I'll see if I need to add a few, a couple more leaves just to fill in the holes. But I think it should be okay, I hope. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for being part of this journey again. I hope you create this beautiful piece. It's easy, it's simple, and it's fast. It's just very, you know, detailed. So if you want something gorgeous, you have to detail it. And um, thank you for your support. And please stay safe until the next time. Please don't forget to give it those thumbs up. It's important to circulate the video. And newcomers, please subscribe. Be part of our journey. And uh, any questions, please feel free. I am here to help you. Thank you so much, everybody. Until next time. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for the video at the end.